1.3 billion of us as a population of the country. And it's the people who make a place. The human experience of emotions that, you know, that actually becomes a real past that we all belong to. Our actions and our chosen destinies are based on emotions and nothing else. And that is what offers a more precise insight into what history really means. Photographs uh, are one kind of memory and they're also actually history. Photographs from family archives are taken for personal reasons only, but they hold incredible, incredible historical information. They have secrets, secrets that you would never have thought these images can have. And they form the missing link to a country's emotional history. These pictures you see are actually my aunts and my mother who sits in the bottom center. The photographs offer some information. They offer information on women of the time, region, religion, education, photo technique. Uh, I can also tell you their names and their dates and this place where this image was taken. It was incidentally taken by one photographer over this entire decade. And, but other than that, if you don't have a context to what these images have to tell you, um, it has nothing more to say. It has nothing more to offer except that these are pictures of their youth. Narratives are a context that can change a meaning of an image. Shalini Gupta, Anupa Nathaniel, this was a picture taken in 1962 in New Delhi. They were 15 year old at this time. And at first sight, this is a photograph of two North Indian teenager girls in the 1960s from New Delhi. What you don't know that these two girls were the first girl rock band of India. Anupa on the right was the lead guitarist and singer. They were so popular and they played rock and roll. So when the Beatles actually came to India in 1966, they had these private ceremonies that no one knew about and they were given front row seats as priority. Manjeri Kandi Ramchandan. The first thing I noticed when I was shown this picture was his eight pack. I actually counted each one. And, uh, and please don't miss his leopard wristbands. Manjari Kendi is 16 years old in this picture. This is just before he sailed for Tanzania. He's from Kerala. Five years later, he came back and won the All India Heavyweight Wrestling and Weightlifting Championships, including the one in Sri Lanka. And his physical strength was applauded everywhere he went, so much so that he was the one called to handle dangerous African robbers. He had so much passion for physical strength and building bodies that he started building gyms and he built a chain of gyms in Tanzania and in Kerala. And this is one of my most favorite images because this has me in awe every time I read it. Chameli Devi and Pool Chanjen. In the 1920s, Indian couples from conservative families did not hold hands. Not in public, not for a photograph, no, it was not done. But I, they did. And I think it's a sign of their unconventional lives to come. Chameli, you see, is actually a 16-year-old girl in this photograph. Her husband is 18 years old, Pool Chand. Pool Chand was a member of the Hindustan Socialist Republican Association. 1932, Pool Chand was involved in an assassination attempt of Lord Lothian. He escaped, but he was identified. He went home, he told his wife he could go to jail. And instead, Chameli announced that this time she would go to jail because she wanted to participate in the Satyagraha movement. And everyone was stunned because no woman from a Jain family had dared to even think of such a thing. You don't know anything of jail, he screamed. And Pool Chan said, who's going to take care the children? And immediately she turned back and she said, you will. She and Pool Chan were then both locked up in a room by his very startled mother who could see her family sort of dissipating into jail. And, but they, exactly like movies, they tied sheets and they escaped through the window. And Chameli, with her head uncovered, marched into the bazaar with other women, picketing foreign goods, uh, shops with sold foreign goods. Sure enough, they were arrested, taken to Delhi jail, charged with four and a half months of rigorous imprisonment in Lahore. The first Jain woman to ever go to jail, she returned to Delhi, a minor heroine. But life returned to normal domesticity. But now her world is thought somehow, I think, widened because she now wore only handspun clothes. She used to also handspun them herself. Her ghungat, her veil, which was a, was a few inches higher, and she organized meetings like widow remarriage. And for that, she has an award named after her. Then there are lives which reveal themselves at 
very unexpected times. And in this particular case, three centuries later and because of this project. These two images you see were sent to me by Jason Scott from the United Kingdom. And the photograph on the left is of Jason's great-great-grandparents taken at their bungalow in Bangalore. On the right, you see are his great-grandparents, and that child you see is Jason's grandfather. But I want to let you know what happened because of this image. Jason's image opened up an unexpected dimension for this project. He sent an image, wrote a narrative about it, mentioned an ancestor called James Scott Savory from the 18th century, who's not even there in the image. The name, however, is now a search term on the internet and was found by two different people at two different times, one, in, one gentleman in the US, one in Australia, who emailed to say that they too were descendants of James Scott Savory. So almost six generations later, three continents apart, and with a little help of Google, Mr. Scott Savory's descendants are in touch. Their lives have no doubt changed. Indian Memory Project is not an archive of just another images of catalog numbers and everything. It reconstructs the visual history, or it is attempting to do so, which is so rich that you would find it too surprising to even believe. And no matter what you and I do, or somebody else does, or how short or long our lives are, each one of us plays a central role in the history of the world. Thank you.